Hi everyone and welcome to HUD Chat. I'm pleased that you've tuned in tonight because we're going to be blessed by the message that we're going to hear from my good friend all the way from the USA. Before we start, I'd just like to make a special mention for all those families that have been suffering from the impact of Cyclone Gabriel in New Zealand. I just want to let you know that our prayers and our thoughts are with you and your family. And it's just another sign, folks, that Jesus is coming very, very soon. You know, if you'd like to connect with us, if you'd like to support this ministry, you can feel free to type your questions or comments in the chat box below on YouTube or Facebook. Or, you know, you can send your questions to hubjetquestions at gmail.com. Now, it was just the other month that I got a set, sent a message from one of my friends saying, Jaden, you need to listen to this guy on YouTube because, man, he is preaching up a storm and he is preaching present truth. So after listening to my friend Marco Collish all the way from the USA, I decided I think we need to get Marco on to ask and to give us some answers to some big questions. So welcome to Hub Chat, Marco. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, this is a real treat for me, and uh, I look forward to uh, having a great time uh, with everyone, you and your audience uh, today. Amen. But I, I do want to say one quick thing. I, I'm actually in Canada. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm in British Columbia, <laughs> Canada, British, BC, Canada. Amen. Amen. So, how, you know, we're, we're the United States hat. You know. So tell us, Marco, how, how will people be able to connect with your powerful ministry that you've got happening over there in Canada? Well, um, the easiest way to do it is to go to my website, which is up here on, as you can see over my shoulder there, it's www.profitfromprofits.com. That's the easiest way to do it. I also have a YouTube channel. I'm on Odyssey and Rumble as well. Look up Profit from Profits, and uh, you can connect with me there. If you go to my website, there's a contact page, and you can send me an email. And I, I get emails. I respond to emails as, as much as I can. And uh, that's the quickest and easiest way to get a hold of me. Amen. Amen. Well, it's a real blessing to have you on Hub Chat today, Marco. And um, I know I've sent you some questions already that our viewers have been sending us. So mm -hmm. we've got a fantastic PowerPoint slide that we're going to go through and we're going to break these questions down. Absolutely. So let's open with a word of prayer and then we're going to get straight into it today. Let me pray for us. Dear Heavenly Father, we just like to thank you so much that we can spend this time with Marco and like we'd just like to ask that you may give us a clearer picture of you through this discussion. These are big questions. These are things that people need answers to. And we just ask, Lord, that you lead and guide us through this Bible study. Bless each and every one of us and help us to know that you love us and that you're coming very soon. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, Marco, I'm going to bring these on screen. And All I know right. you've prepared some information for us um, because these are big questions. These They're are big, big questions. questions. Yeah. Yeah. So big questions. I'll, I'll, I'll hand them over to you, Marco. You can lead and guide us through what you've got prepared to help us answer some of them. All right. So <clears throat> this is a lot of it. Uh, the questions came based on the sermon that I did back in October at the Hope Church in uh, British Columbia. And so we're going to go through major themes of the Sabbath, Sunday laws, end time events, and how um, environment is a part of all of, of these things. So one of the first questions was, when did the change from Saturday Sabbath to Sunday first occur? So when did this first occur? So first off, the Sunday laws were coming in through uh, Constantine on March 7th and 321. To get to that point, though, the Sabbath had to be eroded over time. So you can't say, you can't just draw a line and say, this is when people started to worship on Sunday instead of Saturday. It was a, a process of time that took centuries, in fact, because different places in the world actually kept the seventh day Sabbath longer. So the mm -hmm. further you were away from Rome, the longer that group of people were able to keep... <clears throat> the longer that group of people were able to keep the seventh day Sabbath, historically speaking. You just go through history and you'll see that. But right now, so we would have to say that the change began to occur after the disciples had gone off the scene. And more than likely, again, after the ones that they had trained also had gone off the scene. But let's let's go to the Bible for a moment, see what Paul says. 
Paul says in Acts 20, verse 28, or chapter 20 to 28 to 29, he says, For this, for I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. So that's actually verses 29 and, and 30 of Acts 20. So we can tell here that after Paul departs, there's going to be people coming in speaking perverse things. And that's very interesting that he says speaking perverse things, because if you consider Daniel uh, chapter 7 and verse 25, we know that the little horn power speaks great things against the Most High. Okay? So there's connections there within Scripture. So what does the little horn of seven or of Daniel 7 do? And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. So the speaking of great words or blasphemous words against God is connected to a change in God's laws specific to time. Wow. Very interesting. Wow. Okay. Mm. Very interesting. You have to make the Bible connections first, right? So when we when we see these Bible connections, then we go and look in history and say, does anything fit? And oh yeah, absolutely things fit. So, so you can clearly see there's a link to what's happened to history and to what's written in the Bible all those years ago. If you merge them together or if you study them together, you're going to see like a, a like a glove fits a hand. These things go hand in hand. Yeah, absolutely. Because Bible prophecy is based in real historical events. You know, it's not like Nostradamus or Edgar Cayce or things of that nature. You know, they, their prophecies can be interpreted in so many different ways. But Bible prophecies are based in actual historical events. And that's the big difference. Because God actually knows the future. And he can actually tell you what's going to happen. You know, unlike just, some of these other people. And I was just thinking there too, Marco, it's very important that we study these things for ourselves. Because, you know, we could go, you could go to church either on, on Sabbath or Sunday. Yeah. And if you're just listening to somebody just telling you things that's not where you're going to get you know this good information you need to spend the time in the bible yourself and the holy spirit leading and guiding you and for it to actually saturate and impact your life yeah yeah that's right go back to the bible first listen to the bible first and then from there then you'll get a better idea of of what is the truth right mm. that's where we go because so, you were, were you sorry just before you move on, Marco? Because you haven't been an Adventist all your life. Were you brought up in a different religion, or? Yeah, oh. yeah. I, I grew up. Uh, I was I was baptized as a Catholic, and I grew mm. up as a Catholic. But it's the kind of Catholic you know that goes to church when, like one preacher said, when you're hatched, matched, and dispatched. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I like that though. I thought that was pretty clever. That's true. That's um, smart. But that's that's the kind of Catholic I was. I didn't I didn't go through confirmation. I didn't I never took the Eucharist, that type of thing. My wife did though. My wife was actually she was uh Catholic charismatic. So she has a whole other story that's wow. pretty wild. What she yeah. went through and became a Seventh day Adventist and, and I'm now a Seventh day Adventist, but you know, that's a whole that's a whole other yeah. story. We might be able to have we might be able to get your your wife back and we can hear your testimony about those things after yeah. we've answered these big questions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, miracles, miracles can happen. <laughs> Amen. 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 So I wanted to point this out too. This is in history here. Uh, and I'm going to read a couple of quotes here. Okay, so just bear with me. Mm -hmm. Toward the latter end of the second century, most of the churches assumed a new form. The first simplicity disappeared. And insensibly, as the old disciples retired to their graves, what did Paul say? after my departing, right? So as the disciples retire from their graves to their graves, their children, along with the new converts, both Jew and Gentile, came forward and new modeled the cause, all right? Mm. During these centuries, the chief corruptions of popery were either introduced in principle or the seeds of them so effectively sown as naturally to produce those baleful fruits which appeared so plentifully at a later period. In Justin's martyr, in Justin Martyr's time, within 50 years of the apostolic age, the cup was mixed with water and a portion of the elements was sent to the absent. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, the ordinance of the supper was given to infants of the tenderest age and was styled the sacrifice of the body of Christ. The customs of praying for the dead, Tertullian states, was common in the second century and became the universal practice of the following ages. 
so that it became in the fourth century to be reckoned a kind of heresy to deny the efficacy of it. By the time the invocation of the saints, the superstitious use of images, the signs of the cross, the consecrated oil were becoming established practices and pretended miracles were confidently adduced in proof of these supposed efficacy. Mm. Thus did the mystery of iniquity, which was already working in the time of the apostles speedily after their departure spread its corruptions among the professors of Christianity. So what happened was, is quickly, quickly after the, the, the disciples, God's disciples moved off the stage, quickly after that, then came in these heresies. And this mm. is interesting even more. Now watch this. Contemporary records also reveal the fact that the churches in Alexandria and Rome were chiefly responsible for promoting Sunday observance. About AD 440, the church historian Socrates wrote that although almost all churches throughout the world celebrate the sacred mysteries of the Sabbath every week, yet the Christians of Alexandria and at Rome, on account of some ancient tradition, have ceased to do this. So at Alexandria and Rome, they ceased to worship on the Sabbath day. Okay, and about the same time, Sozomen wrote that the people of Constantinople and almost everywhere assemble together on the Sabbath as well as the first day of the week, which custom is never observed in Rome and Alexandria. So Rome and Alexandria were actually focuses of Sunday worship. Mm. And from those churches, now Alexandria was eventually uh, you know, wiped off the map, but Rome stayed. And her influence went throughout the world, as you can tell, because Constantine, in, in 321, he made the first Sunday law. Wow. Right? So that wow. is, it's a process. It's a mm. process. It's a process that was told about in Scripture, foretold in Scripture, and now we can see it in history. It reminds me of like a, a, watching a ship. You know, when you look at the ocean, you see a big ship that you think, man, it's, it's hardly moving. It's not moving very fast. But... When you look back after about 10 minutes, it's gone, gone quite a long way. And you think, man, alive. And I see the Sunday mm -hmm. enactment, the Sunday Sabbath, all these things. Like the devil's clever, isn't he? He puts, he puts these things, they're moving, they're moving, but we kind of like the frog falling in the pot. Yep. We just, he just warms it up slowly, and then we don't jump out. or we, Our eyes don't see what's happening. Yeah, yeah, and that's uh, that's exactly the thing. It's, it's also the idea of, you know, the devil likes to have himself portrayed as a guy with horns and fangs and the pitchfork and red skin and bat wings. But the devil doesn't look like that. He's a beautiful angel. And he draws people step by step slowly so they don't understand where they're headed. And you nail it exactly. Mm. Yeah. I also had the thought, you know, um, just thinking about the, the long game of the devil. You know, mm. he's clever. If you stretch something over a couple of lifetimes, you know, that you don't notice the change as much because, you know, as the forefathers die off and as the young people come forward, they sometimes forget about the history of what their forefathers used to do. Yeah. And I was just thinking, man, if they play, it's, the devil can, he, he goes over multiple generations. So, he just slowly slides these things in if we're not aware of what's going on. Yeah, he's playing the long game, but right now he knows his time is nearly up. Mm. And so what we're going to see now and what we're going to see in this presentation is things are speeding up. Oh, cool. Right. Yeah. Okay, so question number two. Is there a move or moves towards Sunday Sabbatarianism? If so, what are they? Okay, so let's take a look. Let's take a look. This is the joint statement of the European Sunday Alliance. On the occasion of the annual European Day for a Work-Free Sunday on March 3rd, 2021. Now, this is interesting. This is, this is the European Sunday Alliance, and it's also the Federation of Catholic Family Association in Europe. Okay, this is, this is their joint, uh, you know, lovely statement. Now, now where, look at this, where they start. On March 3rd, 321 AD, Emperor Constantine decreed Sunday to be a day of rest protected by law. Where do they even start? They Man. start basing it themselves back, way back, in 321. And now this is 2021, and they're celebrating 1,700 years of Sunday law. Hmm. They know where this comes from. <laughs> so, so, so this is what I wanted. I want to get your, your audience to know. This is a long game. Mm. it's a long mm. game 
the Sunday laws were, and they kind of fell away, but the spirit is still here. Don't be fooled. Okay? So it goes on. On the occasion of today's 1,700-year anniversary of a work-free Sunday, the European Sunday Alliance recalls the lasting value of synchronized free time. It sounds so nice. It's like synchronized swimming. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, This isn't nice. In European countries, traditionally on Sundays, of course, they're going to say that. They didn't say the Sabbath, the true Sabbath, right? And Mm. the importance of protecting it. On this year's annual European Day for a Work-Free Sunday, the European Sunday Alliance calls on political leaders in Europe to pay more attention to the value of synchronized free time. This is especially relevant in times when COVID-19 pandemic has accelerated existing challenges of digitization by intensifying work and extending working hours, thus putting a healthy work-life balance at risk for more people. On March 3rd, the annual European Day for a Work-Free Sunday, the European Sunday Alliance calls on political leaders in Europe to put synchronized free time as a priority on the social policy agenda. So, Mm. yes, the answer is yes, these laws are wanting to come back. They are agitating for them to come back. And this is a Protestant group in connection with a Catholic group, and they're both working for the same thing. And they're Mm. both harkening back to the ancient law. And it sounds so good, Marco, doesn't it? Oh, Oh, free time. Synchronized nice swimming. Yeah, yeah I, can, I can spend some time with my family or I can just not work that day. But there's a this underlying principle for I me mean, for the start is talking about having a rest on Sunday instead of the – and they use that blending these words, don't they, the Sabbath. Oh, yeah. Even though Sunday, I mean, it's not even correct. Yeah. Yeah, they just – they'll just – they'll just say traditionally on Sundays. Traditionally. What? What I also like about this, Marco, and you and you did this in many of your sermons, you're taking what you're seeing right now in the yeah. time in which we live yeah. in the news. It's out there, people. So you yeah. don't have to dig that much. You just have to type it in YouTube or in Google. It'll come up. Yeah, that five minutes. They're there. It's, they're it's ridiculous. happening today. Yeah, mm. it's ridiculous what, what, what you can find. Uh, here's another one. So this is some of the stuff I shared a little bit in, in my sermon. Uh, this is Climate Sunday. Okay, so there it is. Oh, what else do you want? Now you want climate change and Sunday. Now you have climate Sunday, all right? Mm -hmm. In the run-up to COP26 in Glasgow, over 2,200 churches and church groups throughout Britain and Ireland participated in the Climate Sunday Initiative. Anyways, it goes down, and it talks about climate Sunday services, right? And here at the bottom, they want to secure adequate national and international action, okay? Mm -hmm. So remember, at every point here, they're talking to politicians. In the previous uh, slide I had, what are they? What were they talking about? They're talking to politicians. Here, they want to have adequate national and international action. Well, what is that? Mm. It's a law. Whew. It's a law. That's it's scary. laws we're talking about here. Okay, mm. let's not let's not be fooled. Mm. Why mm. do you talk to politicians? Because you want laws. And yeah. we saw this. We saw this over the COVID pandemic, mm. especially. Oh, I mean, you're from Canada, so we did hear snippets from what your government was doing, uh, uh, and how quickly they could change things. How quickly they could shut you out of your own bank account. How quickly yeah. they could just enact emergency so-called measures that yeah. just changed your life. And our government um, did the same. You yeah. know, probably not to quite the extent yours did, but. This is the thing. When I hear this, laws, legislation, or, man, Parliament can move quickly on these things. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, and there will be quick moves because what we're going to we're gonna go into an accelerated period. This is where we're heading to. We're heading to an accelerated period. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me, and, and then, of course, who's part of these Climate Sunday initiatives? Well, you've got Baptists together. You've got, uh, you know, you've got the church. The churches here all over are all together, all together. So this is, this is right off their website. I didn't make this graphic. I just pulled it right off their website. And you can see who wow. the, the Church of England, the Church of Scotland. I mean, this is the Salvation Army. This is no joke. The whole world will wander after the beast. Eh? Yeah. You know, we've seen you know, it happen and, right in front of our eyes. Yeah, and, and there's still some people that doubt it. Well, you're going to doubt it, but you're going to doubt it to the point where it's going to be too late. Mm. And this thing is, the sad thing is, you know, if you stand up, you would know from the, the, the sermons you've preached, and we know from some of the messages we've had here on Hubchat, this isn't popular to stand up against the common tide. 
You know, oh. this is not a popular thing. People are, 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 aren't happy when you say, hang on a minute, I think you're, you're following the wrong path. Yeah, I didn't suddenly become a millionaire doing this. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you'll be rich. You'll be rich in heaven, Marco. You'll be rich oh, yeah. in heaven. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I say to the Lord sometimes, Lord, just lend me a brick from my home in heaven. Just one yeah. brick of gold. I could use it. Amen. Yeah. Here, here. Again, this is interesting. This came. This came in October of 20, 27, 2022. Okay, this is in October. Wow. 2022. Business response. In Austria, several large retail chains are considering closing their stores on Sunday to save their energy bill. The Sunday Alliance welcomes this development. Mm. Okay. Always right. Sunday. Always Sunday. It's always Sunday. <laughs> Could, look at this. January 11th, 2022. Could Sabbath closure laws make a comeback? Yeah, they can. It's, Do you know why? How I know? The Bible tells me so. Mm, okay, mm. it's so, time to and, wake up, isn't it? Yeah, it's time to wake up. And, yeah, and these are these are going. yeah. They're, they're recent. They're recent. This isn't this isn't old news. This is brand new news. Now, I guess in our digital age, you know, something that was a few months ago is already might as well have been in the Stone Age to some people's <laughs> minds. But you know, this is this mm. is this is the stuff here. And listen, look at the bottom here. What they say. They say that this is uh, the highlighted uh, reinstatement of the Sabbath laws as one of the several policy goals. Policy goals. And what are policies? Policies, laws, mandates. You get the picture. Okay? Mm -hmm. That unite post-liberals, a group of conservatives who say they're focused on promoting the common good. Now, that's a key word that your, your listeners are going to want to know. The common mm -hmm. good. What is that? What is the common good? That is a Catholic theological uh, position on who can own what Ooh, yeah right and who can buy and who can sell mm, all right that's scary so now the question comes laudato si what is this so laudato si is uh an encyclical by pope francis it came out in 2015 it means a blessed be laudato si is blessed be and this letter is based on a uh, poem by Francis of Assisi. Now, Pope Francis takes his name Francis from Francis of Assisi, and you'll look if you look at if you read that poem. Uh, quite quite frankly, it's pantheistic. Pantheism mm -hmm. is the worship of God as nature, mm, okay. which fits which fits so uh, well man, with this climate change. Doesn't you're it? gonna see it. You're gonna see it. It's mm. right here. So Scripture says, remember, remember that Scripture says that Daniel twenty five that he's going to change times and laws, that the little horn is going to want to change times and laws. Laudato Si indicates a clear connection between Sunday sacredness and climate action. Okay, so this is in Laudato Si. On Sunday, our participation in the Eucharist has a special importance. Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath, is meant to be a day which heals our relationship with God. Well, that's a lie because it isn't. But anyways, with ourselves, with others, and with the world. Sunday is the day of the resurrection. It also proclaims man's eternal rest in God. Again, that's his, that's his idea. It's not biblical. But what you have here is in Laudato Si, you get Sunday language. And then you start getting sun movements. Wow. Okay. This is the sunrise movement. Look at, look at it. Look at it. Mm. It's the sunrise movement. Okay, now they're talking about hubs, and this is in the United States. A hub is a group of young people, because this is focused on young people. It's an under 35 youth movement, all right? A hub is a group of young people across race and class working together in their community to stop climate crisis and win the Green New Deal, or a, a Green New Deal. Hubs are one of the basic units of organization within the Sunrise Movement. They play a critical role in building our movement, people, and political power. Wow. wow. Okay. Me. Look at the symbol. Yeah, I was just about to say that, Marco. You can, you can, you know, the sun, sun worship, it is paganism to the highest, isn't it? This is it, the one that it's always there. It's always not, there. yeah, it's not a coincidence that you have Laudato Si come up with a praise of pantheism and Sunday worship, and then you have political movements that mimic it. Now, this looks high, this looks secular. It's just a political movement. It is not secular. It is religious at its core. 
They will mm-hmm. deny their religiosity, but you can't deny why did they come up with Sunrise Movement? How does this connect? Because it connects in Laudato Si. It's a very powerful document, and it's mm-hmm. had a big there's, effect. There's a lot that we could say about sun worship, isn't there? I was just yeah. thinking back to the three Hebrews and when they when Nebuchadnezzar set up the image, mm-hmm. and the true meaning behind that image was satan wanted to be worshipped you know there was a sun actually i did i was doing a study on it the other day it was actually a sun worship image that's what the heart of it is and we can hear if we look and we can see this language yeah. coming through to us and it sounds so sweet yeah it sounds so nice it sounds so gentle but yeah. friends you've got to have your eyes open you've got to understand that the devil is like a chameleon he will change mm-hmm. he will change from whatever he needs to be to lead you like a sheep yeah, and we're actually going to get into some of that because the, you you hit on a point here that the devil will change. He's going to change the packaging. People are looking for an old packaging. This mm. is what's going to catch a lot of people. Yeah, and I'd just like to uh, share with my viewers, if you've got any questions, feel free to send them to hubcheckquestions at gmail.com or you can put them in the chat box below. But these are all questions that you've sent us. So Marco has really gone in and he's studied them and he's just presenting them today. So thanks, Marco. Yeah, carry on, man. All right, thank you. And uh, by the way, I love doing this. This is my. This is like a treat for me. So, uh, Amen. yeah, I'm really happy to be here and do this cool. for and uh, with your audience. So, question number three: Why has climate uh, justice become a rallying point for world religions? Well, uh, yeah, you can see here. This is a meeting of COP27. Okay, the religious multiculturalism and in, an endangered species in the age of triple planetary crisis so now all these religions are going to come together here's a bigger a bigger picture and of course who is the who's front and center there everything mm. everybody recognizes this gentleman here mm. you know who's front and center of course it's pope francis wow. right wow. Man. so let's take a look why has climate justice become a rallying point for world religions well my point is that it's not just a rallying point for world religions it's a rallying point for the world mm. okay now watch this why because number one it's neutral it's irreligious in a sense okay Mm. it's non-denominational crosses all denominational boundaries it's not religious specific so atheists agnostics can get in on it it's a subject that hollywood sports business can get behind it's international it's intergenerational it appeals to the youth Wow. It is the perfect bait to swallow the Sunday law hook. So true. You know, yeah. I often often wondered, you know, about say 10 years ago, how how would Satan bring all those religions together? You know, just as before climate change, it was there, but it wasn't forefront and center. But yeah. man, in the last few years, the ecumenical climate movement has yeah. sucked everybody in yeah. to it. It's perfect. I mean. I don't like the devil, but I admire his genius. If I if I could put it that way, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, I got to give it to him. Yeah, he came up with one crazy yeah. plan, and it it's it works. He's been working on this for 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 you know many years, eh? Yep. Thousands of years for yep. his final showdown. And look, it's I mean, to all our viewers, this has happened fast, you know. And if you've got your eyes open, you're watching it in real time now, real time. Even with this climate one, um. Marco was thinking how quickly it, tu- it turned, especially with the Dato C, and even with that last um, few news articles you you had uh-huh. there. Between it became a religious movement, oh, yeah. like yeah. before it was scientific, and not I've seen in the last couple of years has it become like okay, all the world religions need to push this thing. So yeah. like, man, yeah, and it's I mean it's not just world, it's everything, everything, sports, business, Hollywood, medicine. Hell, mm. everything, everything mm. is going is to be touched. And I'm going to show you that even more. Cool. I'm going to show you more. Watch this. Okay, let's go to question four. Is there a link between climate change agendas and Laudato Si? And boy, uh, you, you, I'm going to give you a treat today. Right. Now watch this. So Laudato Si comes out in, um, I think it's March of 2015. And here in June of 2015, you get... Suddenly, CNN, here's their, their, their uh, headline, the Pope's Ten Commandments on Climate Change. Mm-hmm. So don't tell me that that letter has not affected anything. 
-hmm. This letter, an encyclical is given to Catholics. It's not given to the world per se, but this encyclical has affected the world. Mm -hmm. And even the UN says that, and I'll show you that in a minute. So here you have Laudato Si's effect. It's already in popular culture to the point where there's a Laudato Si movement prayer book. Wow. wow. You want to pray to you want to pray to the trees? Well, I'll get the prayer book. I don't suggest it though. Mm. I don't suggest it. Don't do it. Such such a new age shift, isn't it? Oh, such my. a real different way of doing things. It's <laughs> and yeah, people it's a, just think it's, it's wonderful. A, yeah, it's a hard shift. It's a hard shift, but people are are kind of shocked by the speed. If you're not if you're not looking, you think this is not happening, but it is happening, and it only takes a few minutes to look. Hmm. It really does. Only a few minutes to look. You can find all of this on the internet. I found all of this information free. Wow. Okay. Wow. Now watch this. What does he say in Laudato Si? In Laudato Si, he says the climate is a common good. Remember what did I say? What did I say about common good? Do you remember that? Remember I said that there's a group of those Harvard people, they're talking about should Sunday laws or Sabbath laws come back, and they're all connected on this common good. Well, the climate is a common good. Mm -hmm. So now you're getting, you, you can see the dovetailing of all these ideas. The climate is a common good. Your goods are a common good. So we have to have a common control of all these common goods. Wow. Now, listen to what the Pope says. There are too many special interests and economic interests easily end up trumping the common good and manipulating information so that their own plans will not be affected. So in other words, he's he's sad that some people want to protect their own assets. That's basically what he's saying. Now watch. This document here urges that the interest of economic groups, which irrationally, according to him, demolish sources of life should not prevail in dealing with natural resources. That is, those people who don't agree with Laudato Si methods and ideology should not get access to natural resources. You mm. cannot buy and sell. Mm. Society, he says, as a whole, and the state in particular, are obliged to defend and promote the common good. Wow. These so are laws all the ones. So if you if you're not towing the line, if you're not walking this path, I guess you're the, you're a common bad person, yep. right? You're morally not upholding your side of. Oh yeah, you're not. Yeah, it's a cunning shift, isn't it? To okay, oh. you you you're not doing your part, Marco or Jaden. You're you're yep. not you're not keeping up. Why are you driving your car That's on right. Sunday? What well, what are you yep. trying to do? You you you're killing people by doing that. Yeah, you're killing the environment. You're an environmental terrorist. Now, I'd just like to add, Ed, you know, a, a few years ago, if we'd said that, people would have gone, oh, you guys are crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I'm, t I'm telling you, now the evidence in the in the media, right in front and center, what Marco's sharing today, it's out there. You know, this is, yeah. this is just in your face. So you can't go saying, oh, no, no, that would never happen because it's happening right now. I, I'm literally telling you what they're telling you. Mm. I didn't write Laudato Si. I didn't no. write those articles. I'm telling you what they're telling you. So if and you don't believe it. What's interesting ahead. to that too, Mark, I was just thinking, in Catholicism, and maybe our Catholic um, viewers may be able to share this too with us in the chat box, they aren't happy with the shift either in their own religion. There's a massive rift going on mm -hmm. here because they see the change in their own church and they're like what is happening here this yeah. isn't normal catholicism so that's what i was talking about the devil being a chameleon he he's just out there to deceive and i and i hope and i want to reach out to those catholics and to those protestants that are caught up in all this mm. i want to reach out to them because there are men and women of conscience in those confessions yep amen and i know amen. god is trying to reach you mm. He's trying to reach your heart, and he is using, right now, he is using the words of the enemy to show you what is happening. Mm -hmm. And he mm -hmm. wants you to he wants you to make that choice and turn to him. Amen. And, and run out of these things. Run. Don't walk. Run. And the great thing is that Jesus accepts everybody. Amen. You know, he accepts everybody. Amen. That's And this is the point. The point of all this is to lead us to Jesus. Amen. Right? 
All right, let me let me get to this next slide here. This is interesting. All right, so what does the Pope say here that comes out? Pull investments from companies not committed to the environment, Pope says. What is it? Ooh. What is it gonna do? You cannot buy or sell. Pull investments. What's an investment? An investment is money. Mm. Pull money out of companies that don't go along with the green agenda, the green wow. Sunday agenda. Mm. This is Hit people oh. where it hits. Hit them in the pocket, eh? That's right. That's right. Because what happens is that Satan knows that people who are not used to relying on God for their daily needs and having a faith relationship with God are going to be susceptible to the fear of going hungry and going without. He's going to work on fear. But I want to tell your listeners, don't give into that fear. God can help you. He will help you. He will get you through whatever it is. Whatever okay. financial wall is in front of you, God will bust through it. But just give him time and have faith in him, and he will do it. Don't give in to this. And he will grow your faith along the way, along the Amen. journey. It's been a big journey for many people over these last few years. And, yeah. you know, he'll bless you every, all the way too. So this is what he says in the article. One way to encourage this change is to lead companies towards the urgent need to commit to integral care of our common home. Okay, common good, common home. All right. Excluding from investments companies that do not meet these requirements and rewarding those that do. Man. So eventually you won't be able to buy or sell unless your company or yourself fits into an ESG which is an environmental social governance. Okay. What, and what's going on here? Like this is a religious leader. Well, you think that they'd be they think they'd be talking about doctrinal yeah. um bible based or even uh, catechism based catholic yeah. based teaching and we've got like this is almost business advisory. But <laughs> we have to we have to recall and this is exactly the point. Jesus said my kingdom is not of this world. At no point did Jesus say, uh, I want to do an embargo against the Romans. At no That's point did true. Jesus say that. Jesus yeah. came to preach the gospel, and people of who are supposed to, who are pastors are here to preach the gospel, not control the economies of the world. But this is fulfilling yeah. Revelation 18, the, the, the um, combination of the state and religion and economy. Read Revelation 18. Yeah. This is yeah. going to collapse, though. This whole system that they're building is going to completely collapse. But now, watch this. Okay, let's take a look. ESG. So some of you, your viewers might not be familiar with what an ESG is. Okay, an ESG is basically a type of a set of, uh, of rules that a company will look at and say, okay, well, is this company that we want to invest in, are they invested in the environment? Are they invested in social justice? Are they invested in in healthcare, whatever it is, okay? But there are certain key things that they have to be invested in. And this is from the business standpoint. There's one that comes from the political standpoint, and that one is called Social Development Goals, I think, SDGs. Now, SDGs have to be done by 2030, okay, politically. This is, this wow. is worldwide. It has to be done by 2030. But these ESGs, okay, are done by businesses to say, okay, are we going to invest and not invest? So these ESGs have been around since about 2006, okay? Wow. So from 2006 to 2014, uh, a total of $40 trillion worth of global economy has been tied to ESGs. Since 2015, since Laudato Si, you can see there's a sharp rise. And another $40 trillion in only five years this time has been connected. So a total of $80 trillion of worldwide economy assets are now tied into ESGs. That is, these companies will pull assets or will not buy or sell or, or have a governance that tells them, well, we can't invest with you because you're not uh, diverse enough or you're not in the environment enough. Wow. That's a mm. lot of money. Mm. Mm. There's huge money. I'm telling you, it's all tying up in a neat little bow. Mm, now, is. look at this. Look at this. Let's take a look at monopolies for a moment. Only a few countries control, or a few uh, corporations control tons of food. And and I, you know, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. I'm, I'm going to say that openly. I'm, I am a Seventh-day Adventist. And mm -hmm. I believe in the, the writings of Ellen White. And mm -hmm. this is what she wrote. 
The work of the people of God is to prepare for the events of the future, which will soon come upon them with blinding force in the world. Gigantic mop monopolies will be formed. A few men will combine to grasp all the means to be obtained in certain lines of business. Wow. And look when that was written, you know, 1903. Uh, and it was a different landscape in 1903. Yeah. But if we look at the landscape now, if we look at the window now to business, yeah, this is us. This is the way it is. This is where it is. Now, this gets even better. And I, and I mean better by worse. Mm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Unfortunately. Look at this. The United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Pope Francis joins the climate fight June 19th, 2015. This was shortly after his Laudato Si. Now, remember, the question here that I'm answering is, has Laudato Si, has it, has it had any impact, you know, in the world for climate change? And is it connecting anything? So I'm answering the mm -hmm. question through all of this. Now, watch what they say. The Secretary General welcomes the contribution of all religious leaders, okay, and people of influence in responding to the climate challenge and in strengthening sustainable development. That's a key word, buzzword. If your institution starts doing sustainable development, watch out. So he looks forward to welcoming Pope Francis at the United Nations in September to address the UN General Assembly. The UN's top climate change official at the UNFCCC Executive Secretary, Christiana Figueres, said Pope Francis is encyclical. So she mentioned specifically the encyclical. Okay. Underscores the moral imperative for urgent action on climate change, coupled with the economic imperative. The moral imperative leaves no doubt that we must act on climate change now. What are they connecting? Religion and money. So they're binding that thing together okay. binding as fast all, as they can. It's Revelation 18, brother. It's wow. Revelation 18. Governments bound with religion, bound with economy. It's Revelation 18. Now, and it can gather, gather, like you said, it can gather all religions, any denomination, Atheist, religious, it just yeah. binds them all together. Everything's bound together. Watch this now. The executive director of the UN Environment Program, Akim Steiner, issued the following statement following the release of the encyclical. Again, the encyclical, okay? The UN Environment Program welcomed Pope Francis' unambiguous call to action in the face of global environmental degradation and climate change. This encyclical is a clarion call that resonates not only with Catholics, but with all the Earth's people, Science and religion are aligned on this matter. The time to act is now. So what's the religion of Laudato Si? Let's take a look. What does he say? Pope Francis in Laudato Si says this, God has for each of his creatures, and which also unites us in fond affection with brother sun, sister moon, brother river, and mother earth. Hang on a minute. Well. What is going on here? This is a, a man that's supposed to believe in God, but does, that doesn't sound like God language. That's a whole different language altogether. Yeah, it's called what pantheism. <laughs> Look, I'm that's, telling you, this is uh, this is all from the horse's mouth. Mm. Uh, now, it took me hours to put this presentation together, mm. but the material that I found did not take me long to find. Okay, I don't have to have any special access to any special database. I simply use a, a search engine. And they they talk okay. about Mother Earth a lot. In this oh, word, yeah. this like word Gaia, yeah. All these ancient pagan. Yep. Um, you gonna you know once you do a little bit of scratching, you're gonna see some stuff in here. You know oh, this I, is why we this is why we're presenting this so that you yeah. know you guys need to open up your eyes and do a bit of searching yourself to see what's going on. Yeah. So watch this, brother. I'm gonna I'm gonna scratch the itch you just you just did about the oh, ancient good. paganism. Thousands deify nature while they deny the God of nature. Though in an indifferent form, idolatry exists in the Christian world today as verily as it existed among ancient Israel in the days of Elijah. The God of many professedly wise men, of philosophers, poets, politicians, journalists, and the God of polished, fashionable circles, and many colleges, and universities, and even some theological institutions, is little better than Baal, the sun worship of Phoenicia. Now that's in the Great Controversy, 1888, page 583. Wow. Yeah, cool. that's a book. That's a wonderful book. You can oh, you get that read book it. online. Yeah, if for any of our viewers who haven't read that book, if you want to know what's going to take place in this world, if you want to know what the future holds, 
this book here, The Great Controversy, this lays it out, written, you know, all that time yep. ago, but it's comes coming alive in the times in which we live. So pantheism is, remember, is the worship of nature as God. And this is exactly what the Pope is doing. So is there a link? To answer question four, is there a link between climate change agendas and Laudato Si? Well, the economy, buying and selling, morality, law and culture, science, health and environment, religion, pantheism, and Sunday. Oh, yeah, it's there. Wow. Exactly what, and if our viewers need to um, get this information, like Marco said, you'll be able to grab it on his website. Yeah, and if you've, got any, if you've got any other questions along the way, uh, feel free to type it in the chat box below, and we can connect you with Marco as well. So, yeah, if you need anything more, because this is, this is heavy stuff, but this is what we need to... We yep. need to share with people. All right. So question five, uh, what events do you see leading to Sunday law enactment? So I covered a few things in my sermon. And if you want to go back to that, you can you can go ahead and, and listen. So I wanted to bring out a couple of things that I didn't have room or time to talk about uh, in that Correct. sermon. So one yep. of them is, is that uh, injustice. So one of the ways in which Sunday laws are going to come up, because they are unjust laws, it'll be injustice that will help to bring it around. So in a great controversy, it says, courts of justice are corrupt. Rulers are, uh, are uh, actuated by a desire for gain and love of sensual pleasure. Intemperance has beclouded the faculties of many so that Satan has almost complete control of them. Jurists are perverted, bribed, deluded. Drunkenness and revelry, passion and envy, dishonesty of every sort are represented among those who administer the laws. Justice standeth afar off, and truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. She's basing mm. her prophecy on the Bible. Wow. And the wow. Bible tells us that in a time like this, when the Sunday laws will come. So that's, mm -hmm. that's one of the things that will help to bring in and lead up to the Sunday laws. Now, another one is civil wars. Wow. Okay. Now, notice the nations that she says, and this is she wrote this in 1899 in India, China, Russia. What's going on in the news lately? Okay. And the cities of America, thousands of men and women are dying of starvation. The moneyed men, because they have the power, control the market and they purchase at a low rate all they can obtain and they sell at greatly increased prices. This means starvation to the poorer classes and will result in a civil war there will be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation we are going to head into mass starvations that are going to cause civil wars and this is going to be part of all of that agitation for sunday law because people are going to say we've dishonored god we have to get back to god we've destroyed the the earth we've destroyed the ecology let's all get back to god let's all do sunday worship let's all worship the sunday god it won't be the real god it's mm -hmm. the sunday god and people are going to be so scared, like they were in 2020, okay? They're going to be mm. so scared and out of their minds that they're just going to go along with it because they want food. Wow. And, you know, like you just said, that these very countries are in the news, even this morning I was listening to something, and it was talking about India, China, and Russia involved in, you know, or because they're in alliance with this this yeah. war in the Ukraine. Or, in yeah. fact, it said there that India was saying that at the at the meeting that they're having, don't we can't call it a war. That's what they were saying that they yeah. don't want to call it a war. And I was just thinking when I, as soon as I saw those three countries together, I thought, man, yeah, this is. She, she this wrote is that in 1899. Man, okay. It, so what what I'd like to tell your viewers is consider preparing things in your home. Mm. Consider mm. getting things ready in your home, not just for yourself, but yes. for those around you. That's a that's a very key point. You know, this is not okay. about just preparation for uh, for our own. I yeah. mean, when you're walking with Jesus, it's all about helping other people. It's been right. his hand. It's been his hands and feet. Yeah. And um, we are seeing in New Zealand with the with the economy and things like that, we are seeing an eroding of the middle class. Exactly oh, yeah. what is happening here. Yeah, we're seeing. We just had a big cyclone um, in New Zealand, which is very mm. unusual for our country. And there are many people being displaced. And the sad thing is, with that disaster, there is communities that have struggled because there's been looters and people coming in, yep. trying to take the, a class of people that are just like, nah, we're going and take your stuff. Yeah. And it's like, 
this is the society in which we live. Yeah. It's it's changing. Yeah, it's changing. It's 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 changing at such a rapid rate. So I want to I want to urge your viewers to set some supplies aside. If mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, dry goods, canned goods. <clears throat> excuse me. You know, you need to. We need to be smart about what we do. Don't and we? It, again, it's it's not just for ourselves. It's for it's for people that God wants us to help. Mm -hmm. You know, and we have to we have to have that idea <clears throat> of working how God wants us to work. Yes, because people will ask us, "How did you know to prepare?" Mm. And we can we say, can... <laughs> "The Bible tells us to do this." Yeah, and, exactly. and our spirit of prophecy tells us to do this, and we know what's coming. So that's why we prepared. And as Adventists, yeah. of all people, we should be the most prepared spiritually, mentally, physically, everything. He's got a special message that he's been sharing with us for all these years, eh? 1899, telling us, yeah. okay, you Adventists, take this message to the world because this is coming. And I don't know about what you're seeing uh, in your home town there in Canada, Marco, but in New Zealand, people are waking up. The non-religious yeah. people are going, okay, we, we don't quite understand it, but yeah. we know something is wrong. Something mm -hmm. is not right. And they're coming up that you know they're walking into churches though that they're, they're seeking something because they know that there's no stability, there's no surety in what they've got anymore. It can be gone within yeah. an instant. Just like that. Now, this other one I didn't have a chance to share is spiritualism. Now, this right. one's gonna be crazy. Hmm. Communications from the spirits will declare that God has sent them to convince the rejectors of Sunday of their error affirming that the laws of the land should be obeyed as the laws of god they will lament the great wickedness in the world right so they'll be mm -hmm. they'll be they'll be social reformers these spirits will be social reformers and second the testimony of religious teachers that the degraded state of morals is caused by the desecration of sunday great will be the indignation excited against those uh, all who refuse to accept their testimony so the other thing that is going to uh, lead people into the Sunday law is going to be through all of this unrest, through all of this disaster, through all of these things that are going to happen. Now, demonic spirits are going to manifest as your dead grandmother, as your dead uncle, your friend, your loved one, your dog. It doesn't matter. They're going to speak to you and they're going to tell you to do certain things and follow certain things. My wife had this had this experience when she was a charismatic Catholic. She had, wow. she had a, uh, I forget what saint she said it was. Of course, it wasn't that saint. It was a ghostly apparition. Come to her and say, pray for the world. And we've got to be careful for sp false spiritual revivals happening, mm -hmm. don't we? There's a lot mm -hmm. of stuff happening. People will know what I'm talking about at the moment with that over there in the States. Yeah. But we, we have to be, we just have to be so mindful because, yes, um, you know, the devil is going to appear. He's not going to appear like you said, Mark. He's not going to appear with a pitchfork. No, nah. he's going to appear as a as a heavenly angel. Yeah, just try to say, look, guys, actually, you need to follow along. You you, you need to follow along with these man made laws rather than what the Bible says because your interpretation's wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly right. So those are some of the things that I see. Those three things that I see are going to be integral to the development of Sunday laws. Yeah, right, this so, is a good. This is a big one, Marco. This question here comes through quite a lot. Yeah. Um. You know, how will entertainment lead to false worship? So I'm pretty excited about what you've got to share here because yeah. this is this is relevant now. We're talking oh, relevant. Yeah, absolutely. This is right now stuff. Uh. So how will entertainment lead to false worship? Well, you get already an idea. Who do these people meet all the time? <laughs> Who do these people meet with? These entertainers. Who do they go is to it, see? There's one guy. One common denominator. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let, but let's take it from the Bible first. So in the Bible, you find this idea of social conformity through fun. Mm -hmm. Now, you may be asking, what am I talking about? Well, let's take a look. In Daniel 3, it says, And then a herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that what, at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. So we talked a little bit about this. You mentioned this already about uh, Daniel or his Daniel's friends 
um, and they were not they were not going to bow down to the idol that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So King Nebuchadnezzar he set up this idol. He made it all of gold because in Daniel chapter two he was told his nation was eventually going to be taken over by another one. He said, "Forget that. I want a full gold statue, and my kingdom is going to last forever. And everybody's going to bow. And how are they going to do it? Through music. These things were written. What does Paul say? For our admonition." For our admonition today, the Bible is more relevant today than it ever was. Mm, Daniel is more relevant. It's coming Revelation. alive. Yeah, it's coming alive. Now, what else does it say? And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, psaltery, and all kinds of music, and the people and the nations and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. All right? So who are these merchants of fun today? Oh, look, there's Pope and Sting. <laughs> right? It's a so funny, a uh, funny, fun. fun funny friends there yeah. is <laughs> oh look there's mark Wahlberg. Mm. oh look it's leonardo DiCaprio. this is a popular pipe this one oh look it's katie perry and orlando bloom <laughs> oh look it's Man. arnold schwarzenegger and arnold schwarzenegger thanks to pope francis for what for his work <laughs> on climate change fire right well, i don't think he's there giving them a bible study by the sounds no, of what's going so. on there no oh. No. Hey. So is this answering the question? Sometimes mm -hmm. a picture is worth a thousand words. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah, let's, let's look at it some is. more merchants of fun. Okay. Now the Pope, look at that. Pope Francis turns into a rock star. Look at him. He's having, he's having a good time there. Right. Mm -hmm. Pope Francis and K-pop bands, right? These Korean pop bands, very popular. Pope Francis, Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe said, I'm not Catholic, but I like the man. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, Bono. Yeah, Bono, he's big with the Pope. Oh, there's uh, Susan Boyle. All right. And here we got Pope Francis shares the stage with Aretha Franklin, Andrea Bocelli, and more. Wow. So Man. you you ask me, you ask the question, is there a connection? <laughs> well, yeah. so it's all for a reason, too, eh? This is well, not by chance. No. You know, no, 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 no. This is not chance. This, my brother, is social conformity through fun. These people meet the Pope and they receive their orders from the Pope. They receive mm -hmm. the messages from the Pope. They receive that, that influence. And all these people that you saw, I know that um, all these people that you saw, these actors, they often talk about what? They'll talk about social justice or they'll talk mm -hmm. about the environment. So don't mm -hmm. think that the papacy is not influencing them. And those people influence other people. That's how it works, right? That's how it works. That's how it works. In fact, um, anyhow, and we live out in the country. We've been blessed to be able to live out here, and uh, we've we've got a hill beside us. And on the hill, there was about there was like about a hundred sheep on this hill. Mm. And as we were sitting there watching it one day, we watched the sheep. One sheep decided, "Oh, there must be grass in the other paddock." So you see, one sheep starting to toddle along like this. Mm -hmm. And then all the other sheep start to follow, or oh, just behind them, because they think they're going to get nice green grass. Oh yeah. Anyway, that that sheep got to the end and didn't get the green grass, and all of a sudden, five minutes later, sheep goes back this way, and I just thought that is so like us. You yeah. know, don't be a sheep because these things, these these people, they will influence us in ways. They that's what the devil wants. He wants to lead us down these paths. Yeah. So that you know, it, 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 it's not comfortable sometimes going the other way nope. or calling things out. I mean, mm -hmm. we know what that's like. But God, Jesus said to us that things are not going to be comfortable on the earth when you uh, when you speak these things. Yeah, yeah. So, so watch this now. This is in Signs of the Times, written in 1897. Trial and persecution will come to all who, in obedience to the word of God, refuse to worship this false Sabbath. So she's already talking about Sunday. Okay, force is the last resort of every false religion. At first, it tries the attraction as the king of Babylon tried the power of music and outward 
show. If these attractions invented by men, inspired by Satan, failed to make men worship the image, the hungry flames of the furnace were ready to consume them. So it will be now. The papacy has exercised her power to compel men to obey her, and she will continue to do so. We need the same spirit that was manifest by God's servant in the conflict with paganism. Ellen White literally brought together the Bible text, hmm. the papacy, and the Sunday law. Just on it. Boom. And we Just see it. I'm mm, telling you, bro, right. people it's, need to read it right the time, Times in which we live, hey? This is right, right in front and center now. Yeah, it's right here. All right, now, question seven. Here we go. In one of your recent messages, you shared an interesting thought on the angel of the Laodicean church. Can you explain this further? Yes. Yes, oh, I can. That's a big one. It's a big one. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, basically... Angels in the Laodicean messages is pastors and leaders, and we can tell this for a few reasons. The term angel in Revelation 2 and 3, and it's actually the tail end of Revelation 1 as well, is angelos, and the meaning is messenger. Now, this can be human or angelic. Okay, so when you read the messages to the churches, it's actually messages to the angel of the church. It says, unto the angel of the church, right. Okay, so who is the one that God is addressing. He's addressing the Angelos of Laodicea, the Angelos of Smyrna, the Angelos of, of uh, Philadelphia. Okay? The Angelos of those churches, do we think that's an angel? Well, since the messages contain rebukes, we know that these are not angelic Angelos, but rather these are human Angelos or their pastors, the leadership. Right. Okay? Mm. So it has to be the leadership. And the messages are primarily to the leadership. A lukewarm spiritual state results in decreased alertness, a slow response, and indecisive action. That's a, that's a very good insight. Mm. It's a very good insight. And this is the problem. Because the church will rise no higher than its leadership. And this is what I was trying to get at is that if the leadership is sleepy, if the leadership is not saying the message, if the leadership is not warning its people, they will be lost and they will cause others to be lost. And I don't want anyone to be lost. Neither the leaders mm -hmm. nor, the, nor the people that are under them. But I have to say this, that if your leader is putting you to sleep, don't go there again. No. Because no, you're, in up. you're in danger. You're in danger. I'm sorry. Mm. But We don't want to listen to just um soothing words if, do we if you go to the old testament go and take a look at what the bible says of what god says about shepherds and pastors look up that word in the king james version look up the word shepherd and pastor in the old testament and see what god says there it will it will turn your hair white what god says to them Whew. like god is not messing around god mm. will have a pure ministry he will turn this around but it will be through terrible judgments. Mm, wow. So that's that's what I was trying to get at. And um, and the, the idea is thus the poor spiritual condition of the church is a result of poor spa pastoral leadership. And, and the thing is, we need to pray for our pastors. We need to pray for them. But at the same time, if you can see that they are refusing the truth, they will lead you astray. They will lead you to be put to sleep. And don't go. Absolutely. And, you know, that's what we're, we're told, to test every word that comes from. Test what we're saying to do yeah. today, too. You know, don't just go, oh, well, this is what was must be gospel true. We want you to go back and we want you to study this sort of stuff. We want you to be, be ready because this is important for you to know it yourself, to be led by the Holy Spirit, to be guided, that let Jesus lead you all the way. That's yeah. the most important things. Yeah. Okay, question eight, and then there's one more question after that, so we're almost done. Cool. Question eight. Jesus rebukes the Laodicean church for being rich, blind, and naked. How can I turn this rebuke into a blessing? It's a great question. Yeah. It's a great question. Cool. All right, so what do we do? We listen and we act. That is how you turn it into a blessing. Because Jesus says in the council, he says, I counsel thee too. So what... That should be a trigger to you, right? If Jesus yeah. says, 
I counsel you. Like, this is bad. This is bad. I counsel you. So what should you do? You should listen. And then you need to act. He doesn't write. He doesn't write this church off completely, does he? No. Isn't it amazing? He's given no. us hope. He's saying, right, I love you. So I've got a message for you. Here it comes. Yeah, exactly that. He says, first off, buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich. So first off, we have to admit that we're poor and that we need his richness. No matter how much we have in physical coin, you know, it's not that that counts. It's what we have inside. And so the, the tried gold is an experience with Christ. It leads our character to stand the test of faith. Wow. Okay. That's so we amazing. have to start developing a relationship, an honest relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. the, you know, the problem, and this is what I raised up in my sermon, is that a lot of us are like Peter. Peter said, oh, Jesus, I'm going to do this for you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this for you. And Jesus turned around and said, no, you're not. You're going to betray me. And Peter said, no, no, there's no way. Mm -hmm. Peter did not believe the estimate that Christ put on his character. And we have to believe the estimate that Christ puts on our character. And it isn't good. But that's okay. Because if we accept that admonition, we can move forward with Jesus. Wow. But if oh, we deny we that. Yeah. And we yeah. see the change in Peter, don't we? From the admonition. You know, we oh, see... Yeah. You know, he, Jesus never gave up on him. So yeah. I'd like to encourage our viewers, you know what? Well, we fall over, we slip over, we, we make a mess of things, but Jesus is always there to call us back, you know, yeah. and that's what this message is all about. Yeah, he is the good shepherd. And these mm. are, this is, this is good news for us, okay? It's good news. And then he says, and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. So the white raiment is the righteousness of Jesus. The reformed Laodicean will claim the goodness of Christ alone, laying aside their own accomplishments as of no value. Mm. All right? Amen. So the reformed Laodicean, we look at what we've accomplished and we say, Jesus, I need to do your works and your righteousness by faith, not my own self. And we have Amen. to lay ourselves aside. It's a hard message to take because it lays our pride in the dust. Mm, mm. It's, so it's a hard message to take, but, but Jesus will strengthen us to do it. Mm. Now, what else does he say? And anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. The eye salve will permit us to view our true condition before God and acknowledge his estimate on our character and accept his remedy. Wow. Now that's important, isn't it? That's this will, you know, you might know all the prophecies, you might be able to recite scripture, yeah. you might be able to do all these things, but you need to have that personal relationship with Christ. Yeah. And he will reveal, if we ask him, he will reveal our true condition. He will open our eyes to what we really are, but not leave us as we are either, right. either if we follow him. That's right. And then he says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. So that's good news because he loves us. Mm -hmm. If he rebukes and chases you, chastens you, he's treating you like a son or a daughter. Mm -hmm. You're not a slave. You're not, you're not a, a tool, a nothing. You are precious. So if you're being rebuked, that means he sees you as precious because he wants you to change. If God didn't value you, he would just let you go. Wow. That's a wonderful point. Right? Wonderful point right mm. be zealous therefore and repent that is turn yourself around and you have mm. the power to do that because god gives it to you all of this leads to repentance and a turning from lukewarm to white hot from damnation to sitting on the throne of the one that loves us enough to tell us the truth isn't that amazing eh? you yeah. know that's what it's all about here yeah jesus transforming lives that's what yep. he that's what he's trying to do. That's his business. Yep. That's mm. it. So hopefully that answers that question. And, and I really want to encourage your listeners. You know, uh, none of us are, or I should say all of us are struggling with different things in our lives. Yes. And I want to I wanted to be sure that everyone knows that God does love you very much. Amen. It doesn't matter what religion, if you're religious and you're from one of these backgrounds that you're like, wow, I've been deceived by. It. Don't yep. worry. We've all been deceived. We're all yep. on the same level. You know, we're not here trying to 
trying to upset Catholics. We're against nope. the system, but yeah. we're not against the people. Yeah. That's really it, important for you guys to understand. It, exactly. Exactly. Satan wants you to look at the world a certain way, mm -hmm. but God wants to open your eyes to see what's really there. And if you have been involved in anything, and I, and I know that people are involved in levels of things that are truly demonic mm. and evil of a level that most people can't even conceive. And even if you're at that level, God can save you. God saved King, evil King Manasseh in the Old Testament. That king was an evil, wicked king. Mm. He was mm. a pagan, worshiping, child-sacrificing king. But God even turned his heart. So I want to I want to put that out there because I know there are people out there that may be hooked into things that most of us mm. can't even dream of doing, and you wonder how do you come back from that? God can bring you back from that. It's going to be a struggle. Man. It's going to be a struggle. Yeah, but God can bring you back from that. All right, Amen. last question. Last question. Here we go. Ecclesiastes five nine says, "There's nothing new under the sun." In light of Bible prophecy, what things can we learn from past events that will guide us with current events? This is the point. And you, we, we talked about this briefly. Packaging. Mm, Beware of the packaging. Yeah. What's the meaning. inside yeah, is the same. <laughs> but the packaging has just changed a little bit. The biblical admonition is this. Be ye therefore wise as serpents. To be a wise as a serpent is to study how Satan has worked and deceived people in the past. Therefore, study God's word. No substitution for Bible knowledge. Mm. Okay, number one, read the spirit of prophecy. I'll be honest with you. I get a lot out of the great controversy. I get a lot out of her writings. Man, it's all there. Me it's too. In plain language. And Amen. number three, be aware of your surroundings. Knowledge of history and current events is essential. Mm. We have to know what's going on because we mm. have to, as we read the Bible, God will bring, the Holy Spirit will bring that knowledge and he will say, wait a minute, this is connecting in what's happening right now. Wow, man. And that, my brother, is the, is the end of the Hey, Amen. Thank you very much, Marco. That's a real blessing. And you can see there, if you want to connect with Marco, just go to Profit from Profits and you can follow him on those links there. And man, there's some powerful messages on your YouTube channel. So I'd like to really encourage our, our viewers to jump on there and have a good look. And Marco, I know you touched on there the Mark of the Beast and a few other things. We're going to have to get you back, brother, to dive, dive deeper into some of these big subjects. And we'd just like to encourage all our viewers, keep looking up to Jesus. Keep your mm. eyes focused on him. Beware of the packaging from all this mm. other stuff, <laughs> but keep looking to Jesus and you'll have discernment. You'll get the eye salve so that you can see clearly. Marco, would you like to finish off this session with a word of prayer for us tonight, please? Absolutely. Let's pray. Father in heaven, what an absolute privilege it's been to commiserate with my brother all across the world and and all the people that will listen and i pray for the both of us here and i pray for our listeners that your holy spirit lord would help us to wade through all of this information because there's so much and give us the spiritual discernment give us the mental focus give us the physical power to be able to make right decisions at the right moment at the right time let us hear your voice and let us act and do your will so that we can save ourselves, our families, and our neighborhoods. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Happy Sabbath, everybody.